Holy cow! Oh, she is absolutely beautiful! I could feel these words screaming at me. This is her! This is the girl! This is your wife! And the craziest thing happened there. I mean, I can't even believe I'm telling you this. Hi, do you remember me? I was at the party last night. And I'm thinking, do I remember you? I've been thinking about you all night! This is spooky, man. This is a miracle. I can't even believe this even happened. If her parents don't agree, I'm gonna get on a plane, go all the way to Canada, sit outside her parents' house until they say yes. You know, this is crazy, man. When I was 19 years old, I went to Canada from England for three months. It was just a holiday to go visit my brother. And in the last week, I was invited to my cousin's house for an anniversary party. When I got there, I was sitting on these stairs with this other guy. And all of a sudden, this girl walks right in front of me in a green dress. And I looked at her face and I thought to myself, holy cow, oh jeez absolutely beautiful and I'm nudging this guy next to me and I'm saying who's this girl in the green dress and he's looking at me and he's telling me but I didn't hear a word he said because I'm looking at his face and he's got this big massive smile on his face and I'm thinking he likes her and I better move fast and the crazy thing is something something was happening to me man on these stairs I'm sitting there looking at this girl and inside I could feel these words screaming at me this is her this is the girl this is your wife and I'm like where the hell is this coming from and all of a sudden I just get up off the stairs and I'm like I'm in a trance and I'm like looking for her and I turn right and then all of a sudden I see the basement door and I just went down there walking down there like a zombie thinking who is this girl and when I get to the bottom it was pretty dark and I'm looking for the girl I'm not saying nothing to nobody but I'm looking for where she is and I notice she's right at the back of the room and she's talking to this other girl and then I turned around and my brother was standing right there. And I went over to my brother and I said, you see that girl at the back in the green dress? And he goes, yeah. I says, you know her? He goes, I don't know her, but I know her dad. Why? And I just looked at him and I said, I'm going to marry her. And he, and he looked at me like, what? I says, that's my wife. I'm going to marry her. And I don't even know why I was even saying this to him. It sounded crazy, but it was like there was something in me that was making me say all this stuff. Something happened, man, when I saw her eyes. And that night, the craziest thing happened. Happen. I don't even remember having a conversation with her. I spent like 30 seconds on the dance floor, you know, dancing with a whole bunch of people and I was trying to maneuver myself in there somehow, trying to get a little close to her. But the only thing I got out of that night was her name. That's it. I never said nothing else to her. I didn't know nothing about her. And then everybody had dinner and we all left. So the next day when I woke up, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't sleep all night. I'm just thinking about this girl, man. I was in love with her so much. I'm my heart was like, it was like, I thought it was going to burst out of my chest. I had never felt like this before. And I'm coming down the stairs. There's nobody in the house. I mean, I wouldn't be doing this in front of my brother. My brother's gone. His wife's gone. The kids are gone. It's just me in the house. And I could just let my emotions hang out. And I was dying, man. I was sitting there going, I love this girl so much. I didn't know what to do because I had no idea how to connect with her. And I sat on the recliner and I was just holding myself like this thinking, man, why do I feel like like this. It's like I could feel how much I loved her. And then I went over to the record player and my brother had all these romantic songs, all these records, and I just grabbed a bunch of them and I put them in there. And there was Lionel Richie, there was Paul Anker, there's Kenny Rogers, and I put them on. And then I went over to the rocking chair and I could do nothing but just sit there and hold my heart as I was rocking back and forth. And the music was playing. And there was these three songs that I kept listening to over and over again. The first one was Kenny Rogers and while it was playing I was sitting there and I was singing it lady I'm your knight in shining armor and I love you I was like what the hell am I doing singing this song and then Lionel Richie comes up and I started singing just to be close to you girl I'm like I can't even sing but who cares I was just I was going crazy. I could feel it. And then Paul Anker. And it was like, I don't like to sleep alone. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, if somebody was in the house watching me do this, they'd think the guy's got nuts. But I was dying. I'm like sitting there rocking in my chair. I didn't know what to do. How do I connect with this girl? And then the crazy thing is, I looked up at the wall and I saw this religious picture that my brother and his wife had put up in their house. And I thought to myself, you know, all my life for 19 years I've been an atheist I didn't believe in God and then I thought maybe I need to 
talk to God and see if if this thing works. So I put my hands together and I said a prayer. And I said this, I said, God, I know that I've never believed in you, but if you can do me this one favor, if you can help me marry this girl, I'll believe in you forever. I mean, I said this prayer so passionately with like everything that I had in me. And then I went back to my songs, singing these songs in the rocking chair, dying. Because I had never felt like this in my life. I was so much in love with this girl. And the craziest thing happened then. I mean, I can't even believe I'm telling you this. I'm sitting in this rocking chair and within like 10 to 15 minutes, the phone rings and I just get up, pick up the phone and you won't believe this. There's a girl on the phone. It wasn't the girl in the green dress but it was her friend and she says to me she goes hey Terry I met you at the party last night do you remember me and I said yeah she goes how would you like to go on a date you can come to the college where I'm studying right away I just thought this is a little strange I says who's gonna be on the date she goes well it's gonna be you and me and then she mentions the girl in the green dress she mentions her name and then she says and we'll get a fourth person so there'll be four of us as soon as she mentioned that girl in the green dress her name instantly I said, I'm in. <laughs> I thought, what am I going to say? No. And she, and she says, okay, great. And then I put the phone down and I thought to myself, this is spooky, man. This is a miracle. I can't even believe this even happened. When I put the phone down, within 30 seconds, the phone rang again. And you ain't going to believe this. When I picked up the phone, it was her. It was the girl in the green dress. And she says to me, she goes, hi, do you remember me? I was at the party last night. And I'm thinking, do I remember you? I've been thinking about you all night. I didn't say that to her. I said, yeah, of course. I remember you. She goes, did my friend phone you? I said, yeah. She goes, what did she say? Well, she said to me, would you like to go on a date? And she said, she invited me to a college and she said, you were also going to join her and she was going to get a fourth person. But when she mentioned your name right away, I said, I'm in. And then I couldn't believe what I was hearing. She says to me, well, when I found out that you were coming, I said, yes. And as soon as she said that, I thought to myself, this is it. This is my inn right here. So then I said to her, I said, look, how about I phone your friend and I'll tell her that I can't make it. And then you and me will go by ourselves on a date. And she said, okay, I couldn't believe it. I put the phone down and right away I thought, holy cow, man, God works fast. So the next day we both went to Center Island in Toronto and we spent the entire day together. And the crazy thing is we just talked and talked and talked for hours and everything that I could even think of. I told her, I wanted to tell her everything about my past. And she started telling me everything about her past. And I couldn't even believe that the conversation was totally effortless. There wasn't even a gap. We just got on so well together. And at the end of the day, I got in the in the bus and I took her all the way back to her parents' house, dropped her off. Then I caught the bus again for two hours, came all the way back to my brother's house. I ran upstairs and I went into my brother's bedroom because that's where the phone was. So I went inside, shut the door and I sat on the floor and I phoned her. And when I rang her, we had an agreement that when I ring her, the phone would ring only once and then I'd hang up. So then she'd know it's me. So when it rings again, she would pick up the phone. So I rang her again and then she picked it up right away. So I said to her, what did you think of the date? And she says, it, I had a great time. What did you think of it? And I said to her, I said, I loved it. It was fantastic. And then all of a sudden, these words came out of my mouth and I said to her, so you want to get married? And she said, all right. I couldn't believe she actually said it. She said, all right. I mean, I didn't say this to her. I'm thinking in my head, I can't believe it. She actually agreed on the first date that she wants to get married. I was like blown away. I couldn't believe those voices I was hearing that this is the one, this is the girl, this is the one you're going to marry. It came true. And then we took a few minutes and we were discussing our strategy because I told her, I said, look, because our families do arrange marriages, I says, I'm going to try to find somebody in our family that knows your family. And then we'll figure out a way that we can make it look like an arranged marriage. So leave the rest to me. And she said, okay, for the next four days, because I 
that's all I had. I had to go back to England. What I did was I wanted to spend as much time with her as I could. So I'd get up in the morning early and I would catch the bus and I would head downtown where she worked and I'd meet her there for 12 o'clock. Then we'd go for lunch. We would go and have ham and cheese croissants. She loved those. So we would have a ham and cheese croissant in her favorite restaurant. And then she'd sometimes have an extended lunch. We'd go to the park, we'd lie under the tree and then she'd go back to work. And then I'd go into the library and I'd sit there and waste four hours till five o'clock. At five o'clock, I'd go back to her office. I'd pick her up, we'd get on the bus, we'd drive for an hour on the bus to her parents' house. Then I'd get back on the bus. I'd take two hours all the way back to my brother's house. And then when I got home, I'd go straight to the phone and talk to her. I did this every single day for four days because I knew I'm going back to England and I couldn't live without this girl. So whatever I had to do, I was gonna spend as much time with her as I could. So when I got back to England, I had obviously had a ton of her pictures and I put them all over my bedroom and I was showing everybody her beautiful face. And uh, on this one day, my mom comes into my bedroom. So my mom's sitting on the bed and she says to me, she goes, there's a problem. I said, what? She goes, somebody said something. Somebody on the girl's side has said to her parents that they shouldn't allow her to marry you. I said, why? She goes, I don't know. And right there, I thought, I know why. The reason somebody might have said something is because she's beautiful and they just want their son to marry her instead of me. And you know what? If her parents don't agree, I'm gonna get on a plane, go all the way to Canada, sit outside her parents' house until they say yes. There's no way, they don't have a choice I'm gonna marry this girl. So then when my mom went downstairs, I made a phone call and I called the girl in Canada and I said to her, I said, is everything okay? I said, because I heard some stuff happening here. And then she tells me, she goes, well, it's my mom. I said, what about your mom? She goes, she's not quite on board. She's like, this is not the guy for you. And she says, she kept asking me all these questions and I didn't wanna lie. So I told her the truth. I said, what she ask you? She goes, well, she asked me these three questions. I said, what? She goes, well, first she says, does he have a degree? So I told her, no. And then she said, does he have a job? And I told her, no. And then she said, does he have any money? And I said, no. And then she goes, and you wanna marry this guy? And as soon as she said that, I started laughing. And I said, you know what, your mom's right. I said, if somebody came to me and said, look, I wanna marry your daughter, and he had no degree, no job, no money, I'd say to my daughter, what are you marrying this bum for? So I, says, I would say exactly the same thing. And then she started laughing. And we're both sitting there laughing on the phone because she knew my intentions was to start a business and all that other stuff didn't even mean anything. She was not phased one bit because we loved each other. About a week after, my mom and dad say, we're going over to this uh, family relative's house. So we go and we're sitting there having dinner. And at the end of the dinner, the father in that house, he looks at me and he says, why don't you go into the kitchen and have a chat with my daughter? And I'm like looking at him thinking, that's a bit of a weird statement. Remember, I'm, <laughs> I'm 19 years old and I'm sitting here with my mom and dad's here. He's here, his wife is here. And I'm thinking, why would he even say this? Why don't you go in the kitchen and have a chat with my my daughter. So I get up, I go in the kitchen and she starts talking to me. And right there, I realized what the hell? These people are trying to get me to marry this girl. And I just sort of like turned off and I'm thinking in my mind, there is no way I am marrying anybody except the girl in Canada. And I told my mom, I said, don't do this to me again. I said, I ain't doing this. I'm not marrying nobody except this girl, no matter what happens. So then in Canada, the girl in the green dress was adamant and she was telling her mom and her dad that this is the guy that I wanna marry. And you know, in the end, the thing that saved my butt and convinced her parents to actually decide to go ahead with this thing was not my long hair and mustache and good looks because that was all gone. It was my parents' reputation. They were so well respected in the community that because of their reputation, it convinced her parents that, okay, we will agree for our daughter to marry your son. That's what saved my ass and that's what made this marriage go through. So finally, after eight months, I went 
went back to Canada and would you believe we got married eight days after my 20th birthday and today we've been married for 38 years and we have two kids and back then we had no emails or internet so the only way that we could communicate was by writing letters and by phoning each other on a landline and would you believe in those eight months every letter that I wrote to her and that she wrote to me I got them all here right here in this pouch there's like 30 to 40 letters I've kept every single one of them and every year on our anniversary we sit there and we read these letters and we remember what it was like when we met so every year when I read these letters I remember the day when I woke up and my heart was aching and I was in love with this girl so much but I had no idea how I was ever going to be able to marry her and then I prayed that prayer God if you're really there, if you can please do me this favor and help me to marry this girl, I'll believe in you forever. Well, guess what? I believe in God.